The single aisle A321 series has rapidly advanced across recent years. However, a prospective A322 really aimed to redefine what this type of travel would look to offer customers. Among the A321 program is the A321neo, which acts as the base model. The A321LR and the newly launched A321XLR with the latter aimed at helping propel airlines thanks to its range capabilities. However, the A322, a high hypothetical and at times studied extension of that series, has offered excellent prospects to act as a bit of an evolution and even a follow-up at times to the popular series. However, how does the A321XLR stack up with the A322? What would the unreleased variant offer carriers and just what is next for this program? The Airbus A321XLR was launched in 2019 at the Paris Air Show. In essence, the aircraft represents the future for single aisle families, as more airlines require flexibility for their day-to-day -day operations. Designed to extend the range of its predecessor, the LR, the XLR offers a range of upwards of 4,700 nautical miles. As a result, this enables airlines to operate point-to-point -point routes previously only feasible with larger, wide-body planes. All of a sudden, thanks to the capabilities of the XLR, airlines that were previously unable to serve specific locations, well, now they can do so at a much cheaper cost than some of the larger planes that maybe may not align with their core business model. The XLR is equipped with efficient engines, improved aerodynamics, and a rear centre fuel tank, which helps the aircraft deliver that impressive range that has made it a true selling point and a favourite among airlines already. The A322, on the other hand, remains a study rather than a concrete project that has, say, been formally launched. Airbus had actually actually reportedly on several occasions explored the premise of this narrow body as a potential evolution of the broader A320neo family and a replacement. Airbus would look to have the A322 feature increased seating capacity. Through this increase, it would attempt even slightly to surpass the seating on the 321. However, arguably, some of the larger changes would come in the form of studied new wing designs being implemented and even brand new, more modern and efficient engines to enhance performance. You would see other improvements to make it a worthwhile upgrade for airlines to commit to. Hypothetically, the A322 could offer airlines basically a higher capacity solution for your more busy medium haul routes, and through this, it would again follow that theme that the A321 has really strived at, it being a larger plane that sticks out not as a wide body, but as its own thing. At their core, the A321 XLR and hypothetical A322 do target different requirements, while yes, they share some similarities given that they are single aisle narrow bodies. The A321 XLR focuses really on maximizing range while maintaining high levels of efficiency, and by doing this, the aircraft caters for routes connecting smaller cities across continents or even larger ones that still have significant distance between them and maybe in the past have not been served. However, the A322, by contrast, wouldn't necessarily just prioritize range. We're looking at a major overhaul of what we know about single aisle flying and finding a way to make travel even more efficient with capacity as well. Its development would, by reports, include redesigns, which is huge compared to the XLR, which, don't get me wrong, had work go into it to make the launch possible, but nowhere near what we would have seen with a 322. These redesigns would include, as I mentioned, wings, further engine improvements, just to find ways to make the plane more efficient and stand out as a more complete aircraft, remember, one that would have to be used for future decades. Another distinction lies in the market adoption of these two planes. The XLR is already redefining single aisle travel and its adjustments are relatively straightforward and this is thanks to its reliance on the A321neo, an existing plane, basically using that as a platform to springboard up to what we see today. However, the A322 would require far more extensive engineering work that at the time of the studies was also not yet proven, thus making it a far longer term project with a lot more risks associated and the prospect of greater reward, however, being a lot higher if it was pulled off to the liking of airline customers. Therefore, it's something you just can't rush. You have to take your time and you have to make sure that the innovations you would be looking to implement would be worthwhile. Why hasn't an A322 launched? Well, I touched on it just a little bit in the last 30 seconds, but it does remain an unrealized plane at this stage, having 
not got the necessary go-ahead approval from the plane maker. Firstly, the business case for its development, you'd argue, was probably a little less compelling when you really take a look at the period in time it was being studied in the latter stages of the 2010s and especially into the early 2020s were among some of the more turbulent you'd feel our industry has faced in the last few decades. Moreover, the work required fundamentally to produce an aircraft such as the A322, while not on the levels of the world's largest passenger plane, is still colossal, attempting to strike the right balance between innovation and the cost that you're putting in is tough and over at Boeing they've actually stated to us many times they don't believe that they currently have the available technology to make their next commercial airliner right now a big enough upgrade and that's something that's really important to note. I know there'll be plenty of people that will look towards Boeing and their next new commercial airliner as they've missed the boat and sure you could make the case that they have but they've got a point they feel they'd rather wait till studies develop and mature first Further. And then with time, come say the 2030s, they can really look to redefine a single aisle flying again. And this is what Airbus was trying to do through these development studies. The XLR just simply stood out to be a more optimal alternative, building upon the existing base model and coming into the scene to really push the boundaries as a much safer option, all things considered, while still slotting into a segment that airlines were demanding. This because the A322 would have required much more design changes over the XLR, including your new wings, landing gears, the structure of the fuselage, engines and more, you're no longer just relying on Airbus, you're also relying on suppliers and other parties to come to the table and make this aircraft a reality in a relatively short time. And we should know now, taking a look at the last five years, that's absolutely not easy. You look at the increased development costs, the risks associated, and they just felt it wasn't the right time to take this on. Although the A322 did not itself proceed, an Airbus went ahead with the XLR to advance its grip on the single aisle market, it really doesn't mean that we won't see something like the A322 in the future. In fact, many people would argue that you're probably going to. Airbus knows it's got to replace the A320neo family at some point. And yes, I know it's crazy that we're even having this discussion, but if anything, as we get older, time flies. It's already been five years since the global pandemic, which is crazy to me. We're the midway point through this decade. And when it comes to the aviation industry, you can't be thinking two months in advance. Yes, you need to be thinking years and years and years and years. There's moreover, there's also consideration at Airbus at the potential to advance ahead of competitor Boeing and capitalize on their own struggles in recent times. An A322-like aircraft could emerge as part of that next generation narrowbody lineup with materials, improved propulsion systems, and also advancements from an aerodynamic standpoint. Airbus could really develop a plane that combines the core things being studied today. The A322 certainly slots into that new age of single aisle aircraft, even though it hasn't come out yet. It involves a real rapid rise of high capacity single aisle jets that are highlighted through their versatility and appeal on an economic standpoint. Your planes such as the A321XLR have advanced so quickly over smaller models such as the A320neo because they offer that wiggle room and additional seating capacity and range that airlines feel they want nowadays to stretch into new markets. What is also visibly being seen with aircraft types such as what I'm discussing today is airlines venturing into those new locations. They're making new city pairings that were not previously viable a true possibility and moving away from the traditional hub and spoke model. Whether or not Airbus uses the A322 designation remains to be seen but really what I'm getting at here is the principle of the aircraft from new engines to redefine find wings are going to be a real core focus for the plane maker's future by all accounts. The A321XLR was really just deemed as a safer, great alternative now, whereas a hypothetical A322, or should we just say a new commercial airliner in the single aisle family, represents what the long-term future should look like, and the next five years or so are going to be really important in Airbus's shoes to understand what they can really implement on this base model. Thanks a lot for tuning into this video here on Globetrotting. Please take care, do be safe, and I will indeed see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis.